Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing separation techniques, the different techniques available to us to help separate mixtures. So we're going to go through uh, kind of about half a dozen or so particular techniques that we commonly encounter in the lab. We're going to firstly be talking about sedimentation and decanting, filtration, evaporation, sieving, magnetic separation and distillation. Now, this is by no means a, mo a comprehensive list, it doesn't cover every type of technique that we encounter, but these are some very common ones that we might use. Um, and I'll, we'll talk through the types, of, um, the types of mixtures they can separate, as well as then the actual principle behind it. How does it work? So firstly, thinking about sedimentation and decanting, or decantation is sometimes how it's referred to. Okay, so it, it's kind of a, a paired technique because they only really work together in terms of actually effectively separating two things. In particular, we're talking about an insoluble solid and a liquid. Remember, insoluble means it doesn't dissolve. So that might be suspended with inside it, so, so it, it actually kind of floats in amongst it. It might, um, it, it, which it might eventually settle out. In this case, this is this, is this kind of technique. Um, other types of, of techniques involve where we've got insoluble solids that don't settle out, and we have to try something different, um, which is kind of what we'll look at next. But so here we're saying we've got, a, um, for example, like water containing insoluble impurities. So these, these bits that don't dissolve that are floating in there, but they are relatively dense compared with the liquid. So the particles themselves are either big enough or the material itself is dense enough that over time these insoluble particles start to drop towards the bottom. And, uh, and eventually they form this layer settling down the bottom. So sand is, is one example of a substance that we can separate this way. So the water, which is relatively clear above the top, it might be pristine or it might still have a little bit of, uh, of, of fine particles inside it, um, is left at the top. And then what we do is that once that solid has settled to the bottom, that we pour the liquid carefully off the top. So leaving the undissolved solid sitting at the bottom of the container um, and the, li the, the clear liquid in another. Now, you can imagine this is, can be a bit of a problematic technique. It doesn't work all of the time because you have to be very careful to make sure that none of that solid transferred over. But as a very quick separation technique that requires no additional equipment beyond another container to pour it into, it's a really common thing to do. And this is also quite a common thing to, to do in everyday life. You know, you might have it if you've got a cup of tea that's got some tea leaves at the bottom, speaking of cups of tea. Hmm? Um, or if you're separating pasta and pasta water, you might choose to pour, try and pour the water off the top um, rather than using some other technique. Okay, but then what happens if the solid doesn't settle out? Okay, then we need to involve a technique called filtration. Now, this can also work with solids that do settle out if we want to make sure that they're more effectively caught. But if, particularly if it doesn't, um, if it's if it's not going to drop to the bottom, we need to use a technique like this. Again, insoluble solid and a liquid. So solids that dissolve in water can't be separated by this technique. Okay, so the, what happens when we pour our substance through, so we have a filter funnel and then a layer of filter paper or a filtering substance, um, that this, this substance is, um, the, the mixture is poured so that it passes into the filter paper, that the liquid can drain through, the liquid or filtrate, but the solid, or which is called the residue, can't. It gets blocked by the, the, the pores of the paper. Okay, and so then if we want to keep these particles, we can take the filter paper and dry it and separate it. If we don't, we can just chuck it out if we want to keep the filtrate. Okay, so that's so it means that those particles get trapped. Evaporation, um, as the name would suggest, and as you can see from that, that image there, um, involves the evaporation of a liquid. We're talking about, particularly about a soluble solid and a liquid, the sort of one like salt or copper sulfate, for example, that... Um, if thinking about our filtration we just looked at, that would be dissolved in the water that would pass through, wouldn't be filtered out. And so what we have to do is we've got to use heat to cause that water to leave the container, to drive it away. So we're heating it up, whether a Bunsen burner or a hot plate or um, an oven or something like that, we're heating it till it evaporates, reduces down, leaving just the solid crystals behind, typically stuck to the dish. Okay, so, and then we have those crystals of that soluble solid. Sieving, again, another fairly common everyday technique, not always used in the lab, but certainly um, it, it has its applications, where we're talking about a mixture of solids, so not liquids typically here, um, and, but so we've got, say, like sand and gravel. And so what we have is we've got a difference in particle size. We've got some big particles and some small particles. 
typically, though, or the, the, the key and important detail is that some of the particles are too big to fit through a piece of like um, like metal mesh or some, some material like that, um, whereas the others are small enough to pass through. So the small particles can pass through that metal, so like the sand particles over here, whereas the gravel or the pebbles or big pieces can't. Okay, so this is one, you know, you can see a, a chef here, we might sieve to actually remove lumps from flour or to remove impurities from something, um, as well as also to, to help um, refine things. Um, yeah, so a little less common in the lab, but very common in everyday life. Um, so magnetic separation. Now you can imagine this only has particular applications because we're talking about magnetic metals, something that contains particles of a magnetic metal. So for example, we talk about a mixture of sulfur and iron filings, you know, finely divided little pieces of iron metal. Well, if they're mixed together, we can use a magnet to attract the iron filings to the magnet, leaving the sulfur behind. Okay, this is really important industrially if we're trying to, um, in particularly thinking about things like recycling, um, if you're trying to separate pieces of metal from something else that's not metal, regardless of what it is, um, that we can um, pass it by a really strong magnetic field, a permanent magnet or an electromagnet, and then that causes the, the, the metal, the magnetic metal, to be um, attracted, and then the other material is left behind or separated. Okay, so I just realised there's a little typo there, forgive that. Um, so really important industrially, very useful on a, on a very large scale, but also applicable in the lab. Um, and then we get to distillation, the final technique we're going to look at today. So there's kind of two main areas that distillation is helpful. Firstly is if we've got mixtures of liquids with different boiling points. And secondly, if we have a mixture of liquids and solids, whether soluble or insoluble. So what we have here, we have this, this container. So in this image, it's containing salt water, but it could be lots of different things that's being heated. And then the, as the, the water evaporates or forms into steam, that it travels up through here. And then it goes down into this piece of equipment called a Liebig condenser. So cold water is pumped in and around this condenser. So the water is kind of like in an outside tube that wraps around an inside tube. What it does is it makes the tube nice and cold. And so the vapours, this steam that's travelled up here and through into the tube, condenses from a gas back to a liquid. And then it, this is kind of set on an angle so that the liquid droplets then run their way down and are collected into a receiving flask. So the, uh, whatever else didn't, um, hadn't boiled or hadn't evaporated just remains behind in this flask. And then the evaporated liquid, um, which has been recondensed, is collected over on the side. So it's relevant for liquids of different boiling points because... Um, the lower boiling point liquid will boil off first and then can be collected and isolated and leaving the higher boiling point liquid behind. So this is where how um, in things like alcohol distillation of spirits like vodka and, and gin and stuff is, is carried out because um, when we have a mixture of alcohol, which has a boils at 78 degrees and water that boils at 100 degrees, if we can heat it up, then we can cause the alcohol to boil off before the water. Now, techniques like this aren't perfect. Um, that there tends to, you know, you don't always get 100% success, but certainly is highly useful. Um, a, a special application of distillation called fractional distillation is used to purify crude oil and to separate it into lots of different sections that we can use for things like um, barbecue gas and we can use for petrol and um, jet fuel and diesel and all those sorts of things. It's also useful um, if we're trying to separate liquids and solids because in the situation where we want to keep the liquid. Now, you might remember when we talked about evaporation a moment ago, we're just heating it so the water goes off and goes into the atmosphere. If we're not interested in keeping the water, then that technique's perfectly fine. But if we are trying to make sure that water gets captured, we need to um, have somewhere for it to go. So if you were using, say, like a solar still as a way of um, purifying dirty water to get clean drinking water, you need a way for that clean water to be captured. Okay, so there are variations on this kind of principle. Okay, so you wouldn't use a distillation, you know, for every time you need to separate a solid and a liquid, but if you need to keep the liquid, this is what you have to do. Okay, so we talked about sedimentation and decanting. We went through filtration, um, evaporation, sieving, magnetic separation, and distillation. Okay, we talked a bit about the equipment that each one uses, what kind of mixture it would separate, and how it might work. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.